Okay, good morning everybody. I'm speak I'll say good morning to the congregation as well, but I'm speaking to those of you at home who are going to be following our Eucharist uh, online. So welcome to All Saints, and I'll greet you properly in a moment, congregation, but it's wonderful to see you here as well. So by the grace of God, we're going to be worshipping here in All Saints. Our worship will start in three, four minutes' time at around 11.30. It will be a set service of Eucharist. Uh, if you're wondering what's going to happen, we don't know. We're waiting for further information. We will continue with live stream worship most certainly. And we hope and pray we'll be able to continue to worship from all saints as well. As soon as we have any information, we will share it via Facebook and via the parish newsletter. But for now, let's thank God that we can be here today and we'll be worshipping God with the Eucharist. As we prepare for worship, Ella is going to sing for us. Take my life and let Flowing ceaseless rain. 
And so, good morning to you, congregation of all saints. And I repeat my good wishes to those who are following our service wherever you are. So we are here for a service of said Eucharist. I need to just rearrange things a little bit. Just give me a second. I hope that we both have the same order of service because we come to worship God. And let's give thanks today especially that we can be here. You know, we've only just returned and it just shows that all of God's gifts we should, we must give thanks for. We should never take anything in our lives for granted. And so, let us worship God as said Eucharist. I greet you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And so as we come together, let's take a moment of prayer and give thanks. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let's recall that God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray our collect for this day. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to himself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who is lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading from the New Testament is from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, the seventh chapter, and reading from verse 25. Those of you at home, it's not until verse 319, my apologies, to verse 31. Now concerning virgins, I have no command of the Lord, but I give my opinion of who, as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. I think that in view of the impending crisis, it is well for you to remain as you are. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you marry, you do not sin. And if a virgin marries, she does not sin. Yet those who marry will experience distress in this life, and I will spare you that. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as if they had no possessions, 
and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So for the Holy Gospel, it's absolutely up to you. If you wish to stand, please stand. The Lord be with you. Now hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day, and leap for joy. For surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus said, Blessed are you. Two readings this morning, which are actually quite difficult to respond to in normal circumstances. So let's say we were, can you remember back in November, December last year when we hadn't heard of COVID and you know, we were planning and implementing our Christmas tree festival and then we were working out how to balance all the different carol services and festivities. Remember then when we thought we were masters of our destiny? Back then, Paul's reading, Paul's epistle to the Corinthians talking about us not knowing about the future and giving his advice as somebody who is trustworthy. That seemed a bit crazy, didn't it? Yeah, because he was saying, we just don't know what's going to come tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. So be cautious, be careful. Think very carefully about what you plan and what you do. And then we have the Holy Gospel. Jesus saying, no, Blessed are you if you're poor now because you're going to be rich. But watch out if you've got all the blessings now because all of a sudden you're going to be without them. All of a sudden, in March, you're going to be told you can't come to church anymore. You can't go to the shops anymore because a lot of them are going to be shut. That's the reality now. And that's why those two readings now are nothing like as... Um, Improbable, I was going to say incredible, but I think improbable is probably a better word. Nothing like as improbable now as if they'd been in the lectionary last, a year ago now, in September, when we thought we were well in control of everything. And so it makes our text, Blessed Are You, even more important, because it reminds us that we are blessed by God. I want to round off with uh, an example from the life of the person who we commemorate in the lectionary today. Yeah, you've probably noticed already, I like to refer to the people that we're commemorating. It's not particularly our tradition, not so much as in the Roman Catholic and Orthodox churches, but for me, there's always something to learn from the experience of the people who we're commemorating. And today, it's a very little known uh, Anglican priest. He's called Charles, what was called Charles Lauder, and he was a priest in the East End of London in the 
uh, late 19th century, second half of the 19th century, when things like cholera were killing a lot of people in the slums in the East End. You know, only 150 years ago. Uh, so he was from a very rich family. He trained for the priesthood, and he realized that his mission was to be with the poor. And he moved to a parish in the East End, and he stayed there pretty much all of his life. The example I want to share with us as relevant to these times of uncertainty was that for Charles Lauder, everybody knew him as Father Lauder, but for him, mission was not something where you come bursting into a church and give it two, three weeks of adrenaline and then you pull back and say, there you go, boys, you're on your own now, you know, you've been saved, you can keep going. For him, mission was constant service of God in the community. And he gave himself to his community. His mission was unending and constant, whether we felt we knew what was going to happen tomorrow, or in his day, the equivalent of COVID was a cholera outbreak. He was constant in his love for those around him and his service of the people of his parish. Blessed are you, blessed are we, if we can follow the example of Father Lauder. He eventually died quite young. They said he was uh, absolutely exhausted. He'd given everything. And they said the people of the East End, church people and not church people, they lined the streets and cried as his cortege went past. Blessed was Father Lauder. And blessed are we if we remain constant in our faith, irrespective of whether we know what's going to happen next week or whether we accept that only God knows whether we'll be here next Wednesday or not. If we can accept that and continue to serve God and love our neighbour, then blessed are we. Amen. And now let us pray. We'll pray for the church, we'll pray for the world, and we'll thank God for his goodness. Dear loving Heavenly Father, in this time of great uncertainty, may we be constant in our faith and in our service of you. We thank you for the example of Father Lauder. May we have faith sufficient to remain constant. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for the people of our country as we face yet more uncertainty and anxiety in our lives. We pray for those who are making decisions about how we will be able to live in these coming days and weeks and months. And we pray that we may have the discipline to follow the guidelines and that all of our neighbours may equally do what is necessary to control the spread of the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, we pray for ourselves, for our families and for our friends. Lord, this morning we pray earnestly for our dear friend and church warden, Dick Garrett. Father, we ask that you will surround him with your peace, the peace that only the world can give. May you give strength and inspiration to the doctors and nurses who are caring for him. And may your peace surround also Pauline, Tommy, and Devon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for those who we know and love personally, who we know need your comfort and inspiration, especially at this time. 
in the silence of our prayers, we commend them to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, in these prayers, we remember those who have gone before us and have given us an example, just as Father Lorda did, to the people of East London in the 19th century. We remember people who we have known and loved who have shown us how to deserve to be blessed. May we show that we have learned from them in the way that we live our lives. May their rest with you be eternal. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us remember that Christ is our peace, that he has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. And we have the privilege, absolute privilege, to be here now to meet and to share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with me. I wave to you all a sign of peace and I wave to you guys out there a sign of peace also. And the people here are waving to you as well. I can't, I can't turn the laptop to show you, but we share God's peace together. And now we prepare the table for you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It's our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him, you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him, you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And now as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And now we who are here share the Eucharist. If you're following the service at home or wherever you are, I invite you to say the act of spiritual communion. For those who will share the feast, this is the body and blood of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body.
Let us pray. God, our creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those who you love today and always. Amen. Those of you who are here, if you could just remain seated for a moment and I will go out first and wait outside to greet you uh, socially distanced outside as you leave. For those of you who have been following us at home, we are very happy that you worship with us. For all of us, there will be live worship again tomorrow. It will be morning worship and it will be streamed on Facebook and on YouTube. But wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go in peace. Love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. The people who are here... Let us say that we assume we will continue as usual, so we'll, we will worship on Sunday at 10. We will assume we'll be worshipping here at 11.30 next Wednesday. If anything changes, you will be informed, either through the newsletter. For those of you who don't receive the newsletter, we'll either call you by telephone or I'll visit and uh, bring a letter to let you know. So, for now, we continue as if we are able to, and we trust God to decide what is the best for us.